Uh, hey, what's up? I'm Jay Moss, and today we're hanging out with Dakota, who's up for the week. He's my tracking assistant, and we're working on the new Rebuilder record. That is entirely not what this video is about. Yesterday, we put out a video showcasing uh, an artist called Young Face using auto-tune in real time. This morning, I woke up, and he hit me with a new single, um, and I figured before we start our session today, and before we make our ears bleed with drums and cymbals and all the stuff we're gonna do today, morning ears are the freshest, so it's a great time to do mastering. And on top of it, since we have young Padawan here, I thought it might actually be helpful to you guys, the viewer, the listener, the whatever, to watch me explain this stuff to him, and then you can pretend that you're Dakota and be like, ah, oh, yeah, sweet, mastering. So the first thing we do is just listen to the song, jump around a little bit, look at the dynamic range, look at like where the frequency buildups are, and then kind of figure out, all right, what do we want to do here? So the first thing that I hear is that there's a lot of room for us to open up the top end. I also hear the low end is sort of like 100 hertzy, but I think we can push that down and we're gonna throw more weight into the like 50, 60 hertz area. So we're gonna effectively reshape that curve. We'll probably use a Poltec to do that. I love using Poltecs for that exact purpose. We might actually also use a Poltec to open up that high end. I could see Poltecs on this particular master pulling a lot of weight. Um, I also heard in the low mid range, there's like this vocal peak thing that we might have to notch out. Sort of like reshaping the bottom and then expanding the high end might kind of level out those low mids and they may not sound as prevalent. So our first order of business, I like Dakota's just like, got his head down, like, I'm not used to being on camera right <laughs> now. I don't like being like, Jay, why did you make me do this? I was just supposed to track Rebuilder. Our first order of business is to reshape the low end and we're going to try to make it like a little bit subbier and then we're really gonna expand the highs. After that, we'll take a look at that low mid-range stuff and we'll see where it lies. But this is me literally mastering as we go. We're gonna cut it up and edit it to make it viewable, but this is really just me doing it. As advertised, here we go with the Poltec. This is a perfect example of doing that Poltec trick where we boost and we attenuate the same. This is a perfect example to boost and attenuate the same frequency. What I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna bring up a Fab Filter Pro Q um, and we're gonna put an instance a fab filter here so that we can both watch and listen to what we're doing to the low end. The watching part is mostly for you guys, but I thought it might be helpful. Uh, we can see the pull tech is clipping just a little bit. So I'm going to lower the gain of the song a little bit. Okay, that got me part of the way. That definitely didn't get me all the way. I'm gonna expand the high end now, and then I think there's gonna be some frequency stuff that I'm gonna have to correct. Nothing too crazy all in a day's work, but that's a good starting point for how we're gonna sort of like reshape that low end. Let's expand this high end. We're gonna do, I think we're gonna start around 10K. Then we're gonna increase our bandwidth. Uh, if you don't know what this does, this basically, the difference is, if the bandwidth was low, it was gonna look kind of like this. And when the bandwidth is high, the shape kind of looks like that. So what we're gonna do is make the bandwidth really, really wide so that when we push our high frequencies up, we're not doing anything surgical. It's just a general lift in general, because I'm very articulate. So that sounds a lot better to me, but I'm still noticing that the low end is not exactly how uh, I want it. Dakota literally looks like he's captive. I, I have him captive in the studio. Learning. It's like when I was in, it's like when I was in English class in creative writing and I would just be in the back like, I know I'm supposed to know this. I feel <laughs> awkward. 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. So this is that low end I was talking about. And because it pulses, we're gonna do a dynamic cut. Boom. And we're also going to do a supplemental boost back here as well. We're gonna turn this into a low shelf. This is just more of what I did with the Poltec. And actually this is a really good way for you to kind of visualize what the Poltec's doing. Cause this is it, just more. Okay, cool. So as you can see, we've sort of got that 100 hertz bouncing with the rhythm of the beat. You might be asking yourself like, Jay, isn't that just multiband compression? And yes, it absolutely is. Dynamic EQ is effectively just sort of like frequency selected compression. EQ is just really lower or raising the amplitude of any given frequency. Compression is lower or raising the amplitude typically of a entire piece of audio and frequency selective dynamic EQ or multiband compression all kind of the same stuff. Okay, so now that we've got a general shape dialed in, I wanna make this feel more exciting. Y'all know I love that Greg Wells Mixcentric plugin. We're gonna go right there. Uh, we're probably gonna use a lot of it because one of the things that that Mixcentric plugin does that I don't love is it can make like distorted guitars go crazy. We don't have any of those here. So I think we're really gonna be able to kind of push this and use all the benefits the plugin has to offer. Once we crank it enough, you're also gonna see it's compressing a little bit too. And that'll be the first of probably a couple different compression stages we use on our way to the final master. Alright, should have known that sounds awesome, but now it's like it's also cleaning up the area I just cleaned up, so I'm gonna go back and like unclean up a little bit to bring back some of the low end that was there in the first place. Probably not all the way back to the original mix, but this is just sort of how it works when you're working in real time. You'll start to formulate an idea and then you'll add another aspect that you think is beneficial to the mix and it is, but sometimes maybe it'll undo a little bit of what you did before. So you go back, you correct there and it's kind of like popping back and forth on your way to the final product tweaking. So I presume that we've attenuated 60 Hertz too much. Okay, that sounds a little bit more balanced to me. Now I'm gonna use Soothe 2. I'm just gonna go in in just a little bit. This doesn't need a lot. I'm gonna just notch out a couple of those mid-range things that I think are a little pokey. Uh, overall, I don't find them that annoying, so this isn't like a huge surgical thing. It's just gonna be a little dab here. All right, let's just kind of make this frequency flat. Let's increase the sharpness a little bit. In Soothe 2, I talked about this in my Soothe review video. I love this. Boom. When we bounce, ultra quality. Uh, it doesn't need up our CPU now, but our client will be really happy that we turn that on. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to the mix. Things are feeling more and more balanced. Now I wanna start adding some compression, but I'm gonna do this with Fab Filter Multiband Compressor because with this plugin, we can both balance the EQ a little bit more and apply compression at the same time. Instead of doing that one little zone where we did like, okay, let's like bring down the 100 hertz. We're gonna look at the mix in four different zones and I'm gonna start shaping things. They're gonna bounce in real time with the music, but I'm gonna make overall adjustments that still rebalance the mix a little bit. And this will also give that low end that we've been working on this whole time a little bit more control. I'm gonna adjust these zones because I know I want more of the sub sub stuff. Oh, I'm gonna go back to Fab Filter here. And I'm actually gonna tighten this up and lower it a little further. 
Also, I'm in Fab Filter. I'm gonna warm up some low mids. That's really interesting, right? Because when we started with this master, I thought the warm mids were maybe a little forward, but now as we've sort of balanced things out, I actually think they need just a little bit of a push. You know, what we're noticing while we listen to this is that when the vocalist sings, when Young Face sings, raps, rap sings, sings, when Young Face sings, um, that low mid range fills up pretty nicely. And it does sort of fall away when he's not, but I don't think we need to do anything drastic or special for that. I think we can just sort of like let the voice occupy the range for that and then create like a nice sort of like basket of frequencies uh, in the rest of the mix for his voice to sort of like settle into and kind of own. All right, so we're getting close. I think now might be a good time to sort of review back. Let's listen to where we started. Let's listen to where we are now before we start going crazy with compression and limiting. This is my master bypass button right here, boom, boom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with everything on so far. I'll turn it off, I'll turn it back on, and we can kind of hear all of those changes I've been talking about and I've been doing all in like sort of one go, and it should be pretty impactful. What do you think, Dakota? It's drastic. It's drastic. Major. Dakota says it's drastic. <laughs> I'm a drastic girl living in a drastic... <laughs> uh, now that Dakota is back from me embarrassing him into the depths of hell, knowing full well that I'm about to put this on the internet and it will be immortalized, uh, we are going to log into the analog matrix using Access Analog. Um, and I wanna get some of my compression with a real, mind you, again, a real compressor that is in Colorado. And we're gonna use the SSL bus compressor, super famous. I think it's gonna do a really nice job gluing this together before we go into final limiting. Here's a graphical user interface of a real SSL that is elsewhere. I haven't even done anything yet. I just hit in. And that sort of like weird analog magic stuff, the stuff that is so hard to obtain in the box just happens. Do you agree? Do you con I fully agree. He concurs. You guys like that movie, Catch Me If You Can? I like that scene where he's like, do you concur? Do you con anyone? Okay. So I really like the way that sounds. I feel like I'm obligated to change settings because I'm not a real engineer if I don't. So let's play around. So I didn't really change much. I mean, I like the attack a little bit faster for some of those <laughs> moments, but those default settings were really good. <laughs> I just adjusted a bunch of things and liked it less. So we're going to make the attack a little bit quicker. I think auto release is perfectly acceptable for this. Right now, really quickly, I just want to sort of like bypass it or I'm gonna, I'm gonna wet dry. I'll turn it down, I'll turn it back on. What I want you to listen for is sort of like the hold of the mix. We're not going for much here except to sort of like condense the mix before we go into limiting because I don't really think that when you limit transient based music too heavily, it starts to sound weird. So using like a character compressor like an SSL, particularly a real one, goes a long way in terms of sort of like getting the mix to where you need it to be before you expand it out and make it loud and you know radio ready. All right, let's really quickly, before we limit and finish this thing up, let's do one last A and B from where we started, which didn't sound bad, to where we ended up now with some analog gear and some processing and reshaping of the bass and all that stuff. Then we're gonna limit, we're gonna send this video off. We have tracking to do, Rebuilders coming in. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Dakota, your big debut. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Not a man of many words. Something special or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this guy. I love him. he's great. With that, we're gonna A B, we're gonna limit, and then we're gonna be out. I'm Jay Moss. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Until then, adios, Dakota. Great, good. It's not the